Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at tech draw and the new features that are coming up in 0.21. And I'm going to quickly run through and demonstrate those features for you and how to use them. I'm going to try to keep it as quick as possible. So let's delve in and have a look to see what tech draw has to offer in 0.21. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So before we start, how do we download 0.21? So if you've watched this video prior to it being released, you can download it from the weekly builds. And that can be found at this address here. And I'll put this address in the description. If we look down, we get to the weekly builds and you can see we've got FreeCAD 0.21 and we can come down and you can see we've got the Mac version here. We've got the app image for Linux OSs. And also we've got the Windows coming down as a 7-zip file, which we'll have to extract and install from there. The release notes can be found at the wiki.freecad.org slash release underscore notes underscore 0.21. And this gives you an overview of what the changes are and the new features have been added. We're going to go through some of those new features now. First of all, we need to be in FreeCAD. We need to create a new document and we need something to create a technical drawing from. So I'm going to quickly create something in the part design. And we can create a body, create a sketch, X, Y plane. OK, so I'm just running through this quickly just to get something on screen. We'll have some kind of Square in here, let's close that. Pad that by 10 mil, okay. And we'll create a feature on top of there, sketch. And we'll add a hole or a pocket. And we'll add a slot there. That's pocket both of those, like so. About five mil, that would do. So this gives us something to work with. So I'm going to create a technical drawing from this and use some of the new features that are available in the tech draw workbench. So let's come over to tech draw. And let's come up to model. So we've got the body there and we'll create a new technical drawing. Go to tech draw, insert default page. And this will insert a default page and we've got our template in here, which obviously we can change if we want to. So we'll come in here and we'll go for a blank template. A1 landscape blank, that'll do. Something like that. Should have gone for A4, but this will do us. So let's first add our body. Click on the body, click on what view we want. So let's go for go for the isometric view or the front view. And we add this front view. To do that, come up to tech draw and insert view. So now in our page, we've got our side view here. So we've got our view. And the first thing we're going to look at, let's zoom in a bit more and bring this down. So the first thing we're going to look at is the surface finishing symbols. So there is going to be some technical language in here. So this supports the ISO and ASME styles. So those are just CAD standards. So this will be recognized by people in that field. If you give this document to someone who uses CAD in their day to day job, then this will be a standard that I will understand. We're not going to delve into those standards. We're just going to show how to use those tools. So we've slapped our view, come up to tech draw, and we'll create a surface finishing symbol. So we've got our standard surface finishing symbols here. These can be searched for on the internet. And here we have on cnccookbook.com a description of those symbols. We can find these anywhere we want just by searching for them. And we can see we've got the meanings, etc., on here. So they are available on the internet if you want to have a look to see what they are. So we get the basic symbol up and we can use ISO or ASME. And we can add whatever we want in here, say milling, and decide what we want from here, what finishing, etc. As said before, I'm not going to go into what these individual ones are. We can search for those on the internet. And the minute we hit OK, we've got the symbols up here as well, the different ones. So we've got the different ones here and hit OK and it adds 
that symbol to our technical drawing. As simple as that, really easy to use. Let's delete that and have a look at the next feature that the tech drawer offers up. The next one is the complex section view. And this allows you to create a profile that goes across each of the features in your item or in your model. And we can use this profile to create this offset section. Previously, what we have to do is cut the model and use that in our technical drawing. We don't have to do that now. To use it, I'm gonna go back to FreeCAD. Now this requires a different view. So for this model, let's delete this view and bring back the body so we can see it. We're gonna go from the top. And I want to create a few that cross sections through this pocket and this pocket. To do that, I'm gonna create a new sketch on this face in the part design to create a new sketch. And this is going to be the profile. So I'm gonna use the polyline tool, create a polyline, and that's bringing in some geometry. So let's bring in this edge and this edge, and let's bring in the circles as well. All those circles there. Now do this, and we'll create a polyline. Now I'm gonna to attach to this edge. I don't have to, I can actually use it from over here, but we're gonna come across, connect up to this point, and we'll come down, say here, and let's connect up to this point and come across here as well, like so. As said, we can take this point and put them on this line, point on object constraint, and the same here as well, if we wanted to restrict these and constrain them down. So this is the profile. So that's sitting across there like so. So we need the top view. Let's come over to the tech drawer. The tech drawer. I could just double click the page if we wanted. So to use this, we need to first insert the view. So we need the top view. Click the body. Go out to tech drawer. Insert view we have the view inside our page now. Next, we make sure nothing's selected, so it's just clicked off, and we select the view, followed by the profile. So hold down control, select the sketch, selecting this sketch going across here. Tech draw, and insert compacts section. That's inserted now, so you can see the object to section is the body, and the profile object is the sketch. If we come down, we can see the view direction as angle. So what we're going to do is come up to the model and come into the page and come back to the task and decide what I want to see. So I'm going to select one of these. This will change so I can select the live update and it'll place a section in here. You can see this is, well, this is the wrong section. So let's have a look at this one and it places it across your current view. You can move this out and out of the way, but this gives you an idea of what it's sectioning through here. So this profile, you can see it's dotted along here, that goes along here. When this is added, it will line up with this so you can see what's happening. So at the moment, this is upside down. So we'll take this one, that puts it up the right way, and that's our section view. So simple as that, so this is the circle and this one is the slot. And we can just take this and place it over here. And we can decide on what angle we want. So we can turn this at an angle if we wanted to do an update view. And you can see we've got our angle there. Very simple to use. Once we're happy to go up to OK, and we got the section view in there. The next tool is the whole shaft fit tool. So this adds a whole or shaft tolerance in accordance to the ISO standard 286. And it applies to any hole, and it can be added to a length, horizontal or vertical, and that's for linear dimensions. So if we've got, say, this part here, we'll have a length in here, we can attach it to that so that will be a horizontal length there. Or we can add it to the diameter of a hole. So this circle in here, this will have a diameter, and we can add it to that. 
using it, it's very simple. Going back to the model, let's come back into our body. And what we'll do is select this body over in the part design. Create a new sketch on that face. And let's create a hole in here, something like this. Close, we'll take that sketch. Let's come over to the model, click the sketch and create the pocket. And we'll go through all and hit OK. We've now got a hole in here. Let's come over to our technical drawer and we can see we've got a hole in here already. So our drawing has updated. Let's come over to tech draw, tech draw workbench. So let's click on that hole, just click on that edge. First, we need to add a diameter. So add the diameter in there. So we've got that one there. And now we can click on the diameter, go to tech draw, add hole or shaft fit. So you add it to your dimension. Let's go hole fit and we can decide which one of these we want. Remember this is ISO standard, so we need to look up to find out which ones these are. So you can see we've got Snugs fit for K7, G7. So if you was in the industry and was using this type of tolerance, we can find that there. The minute we hit OK, we've got that tolerance added to that hole. Another feature that's been added is this AXO length dimension. I've actually just upgraded to the latest version of the weekly builds because I was getting a few problems with this. It seems to be working in this one. So we're coming to the view. How we use this tool is by selecting one edge and then the other edge. So I'm going to be making a dimension that follows this line and the extension lines will come out this way. So the first one we select is the one we want to dimension. And the second one is the extension line. So we come over and select this icon here, exometric length dimension, and select that. And that creates a dimension that's in line with this one. So you can see how that's in line. If we select this line or this edge and use a normal dimension and insert length, you can see how they differ. So we get this dimension in this length here. Let's just delete that and delete the other one. Now, the good thing is that we can add dimensions to the 3D view now. So in this 3D view, we can select, say, this edge here. Control click the view that we want, this one here, and set the length. And we add the length to that. Let's go back. And let's say, let's take a top and take a top view, select the item, take draw, insert view, and we'll select an edge, control select the view, and add the length. So we get the length that goes in here. So you see that there. The different lengths because one's isometric and one's a true top view. We could change this if we want. This one here, just by double clicking on the dimension and checking this field here and changing this to say 50. And that overrides that text. So we've added this length. If I come back to the cube and say, I want this side on the top, let's bring this around. Well, that's actually the bottom. So take this side and control that one of the views. Let's take this one and add the dimension. You can see it's been added there. Go back to the cube. That one's selected. Let's control select the other one and add the dimension. So we get that there. So this makes life a lot easier when we're adding dimensions when we're using the 3D view and we can add them between those views. Going back to the page, we've also got stacking. So you can see this one's on top of here. We've got this stack control here just the stack order. And we can go stack bottom, so places on the bottom, stack top, stack up, stack down, etc. So there's a quick overview of some of the features that have been added to the tech draw in 0.21.
and I hope that's helped you and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.